I don't believe it. <laughs> I, I don't believe it because if I haven't made it official, it ain't official. Uh, he has a different story. So, so every time he, you know, he says to me, I, I gave you a job. And I say, I gave you a job first. I gave you an MC and geek job first. So I employed you before you employed me okay so welcome to my channel my name is melody and today will be a video on how i met my husband i really wanted to do this video because i believe you and i have gone through this journey together you know we have really just walked this path together and i know i got a lot of sisters a lot of um, sisters in christ and uh, people that I've just walked uh, through this season of singlehood um, together with and um, people that were so excited for me when I got uh, married at the beginning of this year and people that had been trusting God with me throughout the past few years, people that have gone through the broken engagement with me, people that have gone through um, the, you know, the relationships that were not successful all throughout the few years that I've been on this platform and I wanted to share this journey with you of how I met my husband because a lot of you um, were not aware that I was in a relationship because we kept our relationship completely off social media until uh, the day we got engaged. So my husband and I actually started talking at the beginning of the year in 2018 and uh, the way that he says it, he had just, um, you know, had these new year's resolutions and part of those new year's resolutions was to really just surround himself with uh people that were passionate for the lord and people that um as he called them were eagles and high flyers people that would really encourage him to be the best of himself and so he strategically told himself that he was going to surround himself uh with people that had drive and people that were just really going out for whatever it is that they sit um, to do. Part of what he wanted to also do as well was to write a book. And so one of these days he's talking to his friends and um, he mentions the fact that he wants to write a book. And it so happened that his friend um, at this point, I think was um, a friend of mine on Facebook and he had seen that I'd written a book and he also knew that I was um, also from Zimbabwe because uh, my husband is also from Zimbabwe. And um, he just, for some odd reason, figured that um, I would be of help to, to my husband. So he tells him, listen, there's this girl. Her name is Melody. She's doing ministry. And um, she also wrote a book. I think she would be very useful in your, you know, in your circle of connections that you're trying to create for yourself this year. And so my husband uh, goes on Facebook, he looks me up and he kind of starts, you know, um, looking through my posts. And I think he stalked me for a couple of seconds there uh, before he got into my inbox and he said, hi, um, my name is Tim and I heard about you from a friend. In fact, he said, my name is Pastor Tim. I tell him all the time that he used the pastor card on me, but he doesn't want to admit it. But I read that 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 message. I read it again. I read it again this morning and it said, hi, my name is Pastor Tim. So he says, I just um, I just want to reach out because a friend of mine said that you wrote a book and that you um, you would probably be able to help me because I'm, I'm a budding author. And this year I made a New Year's resolution. I want to fly with eagles. And, you know, I just thought maybe iron would be able to sharpen iron. So I see this message and, you know, um, at this point it was, um, you know, I would get messages like these um, from from like different people, you know, because of the book, uh, you know, as well. Uh, people that were looking for suggestions around how to write books or how I had written my book or who had published my book. So it wasn't something out of the ordinary. And I just kind of, you know, responded. And I think I saw that pasta. Uh, so I had to kind of be, you know, I had to make sure that I respond to the message. So I just say, thank you so much, man of God. Um, um, let's definitely make uh, make sure that we set some time in the future to meet. And um, I, I wouldn't mind um, assisting with whatever questions you have. At this point, I completely forget about him. And uh, so he starts following me, starts, you know, kind of connecting with my posts, connecting with my work on Facebook. And um, a couple of months later, um a, a couple of months literally a couple of months later i am just about to um 
to have my Cape Town book launch. And I think maybe let me rewind a little bit. So at the beginning of the year, at, in December, I had had a Zimbabwe book launch of Hosting Heaven, my book. And um, we, we had had such an exceptional time. You know, there's something very powerful about being at home and having the support of family. I mean, my mom literally invited all of her friends and all of her church friends. And I mean, my brother's friends were there. My Zimbabwean friends were there. My sister's friends were there. There was so much support. All of, a lot of my relatives were there. Um, and it was such a great success. So when I came back in January, um, as this conversation is happening in Facebook, a lot of my um, Cape Townian friends are like, we need a Cape Townian book signing. We want it too here in Cape Town. So they kept pushing me and I, I was a little frugal. I was like, you know, girls, let's do an online um, launch. You know, this is not necessary. They're like, we want to come and we want to have a good time. So I just trusted God. I trusted God for the finances and the finances the finances came together. Um, and I trusted God for um, a place where we could rent out that was, you know, reasonable, but yet beautiful. God opened up an opportunity for all of this to happen. I think in hindsight that he knew that my husband was going to be a part of this book launch because if the book launch hadn't happened, I wasn't going to be able to meet my husband. So at this point, I just end up just saying, okay, we're going to have a Cape Townian book launch. So I start preparing for the Cape Townian book, book launch from January up until um, around um, April, May, uh, because the book launch ended up happening in May. So uh, a few days before my book launch, um, it so happens that my MC finds out that she won't be able to attend the book launch. So there I am. I have this program lined up for people um, and I don't have an MC. So you know how um, when you are, you know, when you're, when you're hosting an event, you definitely want the MC to be somebody that has in, you want, you want the MC to have an, an understanding of who you are, you know, and especially with something like a book launch, you want them to have known what the journey was like, you know, uh, you want them to have been a part of the details so that they can really uh, truly direct the program in a way that is, you know, inspirational and that really helps people get a feel and a sense of um, the journey you took to getting this book written. So my MC is not going to be able to make it, but for some odd reason, I keep getting the oddest, weirdest feeling in my head that this guy, this guy that I've never met, this guy that I've never spoken to, this guy whose voice I don't even know is supposed to be my MC. I do think also, uh, so, okay, I had created an RSVP um, form for the guests that were supposed to, uh, that wanted to come to the book launch. And I said, if you wanted to be a part of the book launch, please RSVP online. And it seemed like on that particular day that I'm trying to find an MC, my husband was the first person to sign the RSVP online. And he was the last person to sign the RSVP online. Because listen, Black people don't RSVP. Black people just show up. They just show up and they come through. They come with the support, but they ain't gonna RSVP. A lot of the people that RSVP'd, RSVP'd on WhatsApp. A lot of the people RSVP'd on Messenger. They RSVP'd. They called and said they were coming. Nobody used that online RSVP except my husband. So I think he just kind of stuck out, you know, uh, and... At some point, um, I think that he stayed in my head a little bit. But when it came to the MC um, opportunity, there were a lot of people that I kept thinking, this is definitely going to be a great MC. But I felt every time I thought of a name, my husband's name would override that name. And I'm like, why does my spirit just keep forcing this name? on me i don't know this guy i don't know him at all so long story short um i end up just you know yielding i'm like god i don't know why you want this guy to be my mc but okay let's go let's go to the to, to his profile let's vet him a little bit so i go to his facebook profile i scroll for a couple of minutes um and i just get a sense of what he's about and uh i'm scrolling because i'm looking for a video because i want to see if he can actually talk you know 
You need somebody that's able to stand in front of people and talk. And I quickly bumped into a video of him and he's ministering. And he's ministering at a, at, at a Wednesday service. Um, and still, for some odd reason, from the moment he wrote that he was a pastor, the first time he introduced himself, I completely forgot that he was a pastor. In hindsight, I really believe that this was such a God thing because I, at this particular point, was thrown off by pastors. As many of you know, I had been engaged to a pastor. And um, I think I can safely say that the people that I had um, over the course of my dating courtship season kind of dated were in ministry in one way or the other. Uh, and I had gotten to a point where I had told myself that I... I ain't doing this no more. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I had. I had. I had. I. I had retired. I had retired from hanging out with people in ministry and past and pastors. And when I say ministry, I mean formal ministry. You know, I obviously knew that my husband had to still love the Lord and he had to still uh, believe in my call, but he didn't necessarily have to be somebody that is in ministry. Um, so I, I was at a point in my time where I was in my, in my season of singlehood where I was very comfortable with God giving me a man that was not a pastor, that was not in ministry, but that understood my ministry and that was supportive of my ministry and that was present um, in my ministry. Um, and so I actually ask him, so, so I, see, I see the video on Facebook. I see the video on Facebook and I click it for like 30 seconds and I hear him speaking for 30 seconds and I'm like, he's the one, that's it. He's the MC. I quickly go into Messenger. There was just something convincing about um, the way that he presented himself. And um, I think for me, it was more so the fact that he had been such a burden over my spirit and I couldn't shake him off. And so I just, I just needed to know that he could do the job. 30 seconds into that video and I knew he could do the job. So I went into his inbox and I requested if he would, um, if he would do me the honor of being my MC. Um, and he says he was also equally shocked because we had never met, we had never spoken, uh, but he was so excited because I he, finally he would get the opportunity to meet me. Um, and so long story short, uh, a week from then, over the weekend, we do the Cape Town book launch. And this is the first time I meet my husband. And he always says, I walked in late. And as soon as I walked in, things started happening. So like people were just kind of seated around. And as soon as I stepped in, stuff just started coming into order. You know, in the next few minutes, everything was ready and intact. Um, and he said, he just looked at me and said, who is that woman? So my husband does a stellar job at emceeing my book launch. He literally kills it. Um, he's amazing. And um, after the book launch, we don't get a, a lot of time to speak because I'm, you know, I'm signing books. I'm talking to everybody, thanking everybody that's come through. So what he now comes out of the uh, book launch with is my WhatsApp number, you know. So now he's got, you know, immediate access to me. You're making noise. He's got immediate access to me, right? And so now that he has emceed my, my book launch, I owe him. Now I owe him a meetup. Like I, now I really owe him a meetup. So now that the book launch is done, I owe my husband a meetup. Like I, now I really owe him a meetup because he did a good one for me. Now, now I've got to meet up this guy. So um, after the book launch, I send him pictures. I thank him profusely for uh, making uh, the book launch an awesome success. And um, he says, now we, now, now I need, I need that coffee meetup. I really need that coffee meetup. And I'm like, of course, of course, we were totally going to meet up. Two months later. <laughs> He sends me a message. He's like, you know, I think that coffee is getting, it's getting, it's getting weak now. This, this coffee is getting cold. And at that point, I, I knew, I knew that I had to meet up with him. And um, so we, we, we organized for a coffee meetup on a Saturday. And on that weekend, we went for a coffee meetup. I remember it was just before my birthday. So it was sometime in July, end of July. We met up for the first time at Seattle in Claremont. Um, 
it was amazing. It was one of the most amazing meetups that I've ever had with the person for the first time. Um, I can safely say that after that meetup, I say to myself, I have met a lifelong friend. There was just something incredibly beautiful about our meetup from the get go. There was so much vulnerability created um, in the space that we were sitting at. There was no, I didn't feel a need to be who I wasn't. And I didn't feel a need to hold back on anything uh, about my life or about who I was. I learned on that day that I had come from a broken engagement and my husband had also come from a broken engagement. I learned that I was an accountant. My husband was also an accountant. I learned that I was in ministry. My husband was also in ministry. All this time I thought he was probably a youth leader or a youth pastor and it's odd because for a very long time i just thought he was this young guy who loves jesus and i really believe that god intentionally caused me to forget that he had told me that he was a pastor even when i asked him to be an mc i forgot that he was a pastor even when i met him at the book launch i forgot he was a pastor i treated him like a fellow brother in, in in the kingdom you know and i think that that was so important um and even when i when i went to that coffee date i went to see a guy who loved jesus um and it was so important because i i had kind of written off pastors so i was going to avoid this guy i was going to get this guy to mc the book launch and i probably if i had known in my head that he was a pastor and if it if i processed it that he was a pastor, I was going to find a way to not meet this guy. I was I was not going to meet him. And God found a way to, to make sure that I did not, it, it didn't register that he was a pastor. And we spoke as friends and we just connected and we shared our lives. And we found that there were so many similarities about our lives. And it was just such a very intimate and vulnerable um, coffee date. And I remember coming out of that session, like I said, that I, 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 I believed I'd met a friend. And when he says it to me, he says he said to himself that he had met a guy version of himself. And he felt this way at the book launch. I think we need to get him here to tell his story. Uh, he needs to because I'm, I don't want to put words into his mouth. But that's what that's how he expressed it to me and from that day onwards i can say we became friends and we started talking more um on on whatsapp my birthday was the next week so he also created another opportunity to meet with me because he said he had a gift for me and he had a gift for my birthday um and we just kind of started talking a lot and i think that what really brought us um a lot more closer and allowed us to spend more time together was be, was the fact that in the season as well i was in between um my previous job and my current jo job um and i'd left my previous job without um my new job and um god had just brought me into the season where um i was doing different i was um catering to different clients um and i was doing it um i can safely say that i was doing it uh, on my what can I say? I was doing some entrepreneurship stuff. Now I'm saying I was I was I was into some entrepreneurship stuff right there. Um, I I was doing a bit of training. Um, I worked for a small business that I was um, helping manage their books, and um, and so I I actually was as I was looking for a job. He said to me, you know what? I've actually um, gotten one um, one of these people that I did work for um, a while back. Uh, reach out to me and they said um, they have a an opportunity for me to do books for them. Would you like me to give you that client? Um, and I actually was in need of an additional client into my portfolio of clients for things to make sense for me. Um, and so I said, yeah, totally. I would love that. Um, and so he gave his client to me. And I think that created a lot of opportunity for him to meet up with me. So every time he, you know, he says to me, I, I gave you a job. And I say, I gave you a job first. I gave you an MCing gig job 
first. So I employed you before you employed me, okay? So we're even. <laughs> But I really must thank him because um, this job was um, was really, um, it really, really helped me in my season of transition from my previous job to my current job. And it allowed us to spend a lot of time together. So we would meet up and I would uh, be, uh, obviously need a briefing about this client. He knew a lot more about this client than I did. He knew a lot more about this business than I did. And so I always had questions to ask. And I was setting up a new um, accounting system for this particular client. And so I needed a lot of his input and that created a lot of opportunities for us to, um, to meet and, um, and, and we spent a lot of time together and over that space, we really became great friends. And it was in that season as well, where he started to, you know, to, 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 to drop the bomb and, 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 and just say, you know what, I, I really want to get to know you. Um, I really want to get to know you. And it took me a long time to warm up. It took me a long time to warm up largely to the fact that this was an actual pastor. And this is the type of stuff I had been trying to pray myself out of because of my past experiences. Um, it took me about a year to say yes to him. It literally took us a year to get to the point where I finally said yes. Um, he says at some point we started, we started kind of just, we were already, we were already kind of courting. Uh, even though we weren't courting, I don't believe it. <laughs> I, I don't believe it because if I haven't made it official, it ain't official. Uh, he has a different story. So maybe one of these good days, he needs to come through here and he needs to give his version of how he met, uh, how he met his wife. That's a good, that's a good topic right there. That's a good topic. Um, five months down the line, maybe I'll do a video on um, how it's been. But all I can say is, I am so incredibly grateful, so incredibly grateful that this, this here is my marriage. So deeply grateful and so incredibly content and happy. I hope that that's been a blessing to somebody. Okay, now I need to go cook for my husband. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, in the comment section below, let me know which portion of this video really stood out for you. Share your personal journey if you've been in um, something uh, that, that maybe God is still healing you from. Um, share how you met your husband in the comment section below. Uh, and let me know in the comment section below what video you would like um, me to do next. And if you would like my husband to do a How I Met Your Wife video. Bye. <laughs> See you.